And in business news, the Vice President, Senator Kashim Shatima, has called for strengthened cooperation between Nigeria and Tanzania in shared aspirations for continental growth and unity. The Vice President made the call at the presidential villa Abuja, where he received the former Tanzanian President, Mr. Jakai Kiwete. He explained that the call became necessary uh, since Nigeria shared historic ties with Tanzania, particularly in their roles as frontline states in the fight against apartheid and colonialism. Vice President stressed the importance of strong economic and social ties between the two nations, especially within the framework of the African continental free trade area. Earlier, Mr. Jakai Kikwete, who is in Nigeria for a convocation ceremony at the National Defense College, expressed the readiness of his country to strengthen business and diplomatic ties with Nigeria. Management of Nigeria's midstream and downstream petroleum regulatory authority have issued an operational license to Edo Refinery and Petrochemical Company Limited Olobo in the Ikboba Oha uh, local government area of Edo State. The authority's chief executive officer, Mr. Ahmed Farouk, accompanied by the Hydrocarbon Processing Plant Institution and Transport Instructors Executive Director, Mr. Francis Ogari, handed over the certificate to the refinery head technical operations, Mr. Shegun Okeni. This is the final stage of approval from the regulatory authority, which implies that the plant can now fully operate as a refinery. During the handover, Mr. Farouk commended the company for achieving the fit and enjoyed uh, the firm to do more. Mr. Okeni reaffirmed the company's commitment to expansion of the petroleum refinery and gas processing subsector and called for more support from the authority. While the alumni of the federal government college, Idoani Ondo State, have called for renewed focus to promote entrepreneurial activities and empower members within the association. Uh, this was the central focus of this year's career and business symposium put together by the Lagos chapter of the association. The president of the association, Mr. Tundi Obadino, reaffirmed the association's commitment to give back to their alma mater through shared value and collective responsibility. Members were equipped with essential skills and knowledge to become successful and impact entrepreneurs, impactful entrepreneurs. As part of the activities lined up for the symposium, a pitch session was held to showcase innovative ideas and winners were awarded grants. One of the things we've seen recently, in recent times, is that uh, there's a need to deepen capacity for our younger sets within our own alumni network with regards to their businesses or their careers. And we're trying to help them, empower them, provide them with knowledge, information, access, whether it's to finance, to technical support for their businesses as well as their careers. Um, we believe that you are as good as your network. And the value of network is not just to, for it to be on my phone. It's for me to be able to use it, leverage, and um, provide more um, knowledge, technical support, and access to finance for my businesses. Apart from giving out these financial incentives or palliatives, we're attaching mentors to these business owners, uh, a deliberate process, rigorous process of choosing the the participants, the beneficiaries of this grant has gone through where we adopted EOI RFP processes. So when these grants are going out today, we are going to be supporting them with mentorship to guide them. It's not just only money. We want them to be able to be strengthened on the financial side and the non-financial side to grow their business. At this time, we need everybody needs to upgrade. So the skills that they need, the information that they need to upgrade to be better career persons, better business persons, and those who are struggling with their businesses, or those who have one business or the other, to get the grants to help them. Sudan Central Bureau of Statistics says the country's annual inflation rate surged to 193.94% in July, up from 158.16% in June 2024. The inflation rate in urban areas rose to 181.7% in July compared to 155.89% in June, while in rural areas it surged to 202.25% in July from 159.43% in June. According to the Bureau, the inflation rate declined in six states and rose in 12 states in January. Uh, in July, I beg your pardon, with Kasala State recording the highest increase rate of 700.56% compared to 383.12% in June. Sudan has been ravaged by a deadly conflict between Sudanese armed forces 
and the paramilitary rapid support forces since mid-April 2023. The conflict has severely affected the country's economy, contributing to soaring inflation, rising unemployment, increased poverty, and depreciation of the na national currency. Asian shares slipped today as a stellar rebound in world stocks paused for breath while bond yields and dollar fell ahead of a U.S. economic data and speeches from the policymakers that are expected to make the case for interest rate courts. The S&P 500 snapped uh, eight sessions of gains with a 0.2% overnight drop. MSCI's broadest index of Asian Pacific shares outside of Japan fell 0.5%. U.S. and European features each drifted about 0.2% higher. Hong Kong Hang Seng slid 1% with JD.com dropping 10% as top shareholders were Walmart moved to sell its larger large stake. Japan's Nikkei fell 1% at the open and has recovery from the collapse in early August ran into resistance, but it recovered to trade at 0.3% lower in the afternoon. In the United Kingdom, the latest data from the Office of National Statistics reveals that government's borrowing rose in July to the highest amount since the pandemic, with the worst than expected figures feeling speculations of tax rises in the atom budget. Now, the report also shows that the difference between spending and tax income hit 3.1 billion euros last month and the, uh, the highest level for July since 2021. About 1.8 billion pounds higher than the same month last year and above the city's expectations of uh, 1.9 billion pounds. The Office of the Budget Responsibility expects borrowing to drop. The ONS says borrowing was up because rising social benefits operated due to inflation and higher wages in government. According to ONS Deputy Director, the public sector finances, uh, Jessica Branaby, she explained further that despite a reduction in debt interest, the cost of public services and benefits continued to increase. Crude oil prices held broadly steady today after a run of declines that have pushed Brent down to almost $77, driven by stubborn fears over Chinese demands and diminishing concerns about conflict spreading in the Middle East. Now, U.S. West Texas intermediate crude sells for $73.45 with an uptick of 0.38%. Brent also experienced an upward review of 0.41% to sell at $77.52 per barrel. Bonnie Light sells at $78.62 with a decline of 2.84%. And for the OPEC basket, dealers are offering $78.69 with a downward price review of 